So can you just share with us a little bit about what the uh, MMIP uh, Youth Rally March is all about and why in particular is this an urgent matter for your community? Yeah, so Merton Missing Indigenous People or MMIP. So on May the 5th uh, is Merton Missing Indigenous People's Awareness Day. And uh, Indigenous people are uh, highly impacted by violence and uh, other crimes against our people on our lands. And 82% of all Indigenous men, women, two-spirit experience violence in their lifetimes. 96% of the violence that is committed against our people is by non-natives. We are way less likely to get our cases prosecuted because the U.S. Attorney General's office declines to prosecute 67 to 87 percent of our cases of violence, rape, murder, and specifically like the youth are impacted as well which is why we're having it being a youth-led uh, rally because uh, between the ages of 10 and 24 that is the third the third leading cause of death is murder okay. um, now this issue hasn't really received the same amount of attention comparatively to say like Black Lives Matter or, or other BIPOC issues that, that, you know, within the United States in particular. So, uh, I mean, why do you think that's the case? Why do you think that this issue in particular has, outside of, uh, of indigenous communities, why do you think it hasn't received the same kind of attention that other BIPOC issues have received? Well, uh, honestly, uh, dom dominant society, you know, only know so much about indigenous people's uh, history. Like, they think we died out or ended at the end of the American Indian Wars. Like, I uh, did my history class and there was nothing further from there. And so there's a lot of erasure of our indigenous history. And so a lot of people just don't know that we exist anymore. You know, we're like relics or something. We just are not shown... Uh, we don't show up in the stats. Like CNN called uh, indigenous people something else and we decided the vote. And so there's just very little awareness of the fact that we exist anymore. Okay. So um, next question would be, why do you th what do you think the underlying factors are or the root causes of why so many indigenous people are missing or murdered uh, um, what, what's the cause of this? Colonialism. It just, it starts with colonialism, starts with colonization, it starts with people coming over to North America and killing the indigenous people here. The U.S. is founded on the genocide of our people. So if it's founded on genocide, uh, we can't, you know, expect that it's going to uh, be better now if that's the starting and building blocks of society. And, um, you know, it um, really does, you know, affect our people with uh, the ideas of manifest destiny, the doctrine of discovery. You know, it really is set on taking and extracting resources and using people to get what they want. Yeah, um, excellent question, which could, you know, deserves a whole lot more conversation, but we'll just stick to the well, the questions we have. And the next question I had was sort of re was related to that. Um, I mean, Roxanne Dunbar-Ortiz, who wrote, uh, you know, Indigenous People's History of the yeah. United States, which is a fabulous book. Her, her language is what she refers to as settler colonialism, right? Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so I think the reasons you, you laid out are, are excellent and important for people to sort of recognize. So I'll just move on to the next question. So for the rally in March itself, are there any demands uh, that you have as a community um, specifically for people who are living in West Michigan, right? Like, are, are you demanding anything of, like, 
um, political entities or governments or are you just in generally putting out a call to like people in general like this is what we want to see happen kind of thing yeah. and if, there, if so what are they yeah so uh, there are two things I want to see happen and uh, one of them is or the first one is that from a uh, dominant society and from our uh, political leaders and our politicians you need to put your money where your mouth is you cannot say that we care about indigenous people and make a resolution but then make no action I don't want more resolutions I don't want a public apology I don't want another uh, first step we've already had all the first steps that we can handle we need the action where is the action? We need a plan. You can't, you know, say that you care about MMIP in one breath and then in the next endorse the Willow Project. That's Deb Holland, you know. She was supposed to be on our side. We thought that she was going to be there for us and then she endorsed the Willow Project. And the Willow Project is an oil pipeline. And so with oil pipelines come man camps and sex trafficking. And so what we, what I'm saying is is that I do not want another resolution. I do not want, you know, another apology. I want an action plan. I want a team. I want funding. And I don't want a one-time grant. The funding, you need to stick to it. It's something that you're going to have to take care of and take care of for a long time because, you know, we were going on more than 500 years of this. And so, you know, it's going to take some time to get back to where we were, you know? To, to, to speak to your point about not wanting more resolutions, I was at a climate justice march last weekend in Grand Rapids. Uh, that was mostly white folks, right? Mm -hmm. uh, somebody from the community, from that group, um, did a land acknowledgement. Yeah. But in the rest of the whole day, all the speakers, yeah. nothing was said about the fact that yeah. indigenous people are the primary leaders around resisting pipelines yeah. and so forth. So what do you think all about the, the whole issue about people doing land acknowledgments without yeah. that? And so, yeah, what is a land acknowledgement worth other than to say, you know, this is who the original people are and that we own this land? What I want is land back. You know, I want the land back. I don't want to just say it's mine because it doesn't look like it's mine anymore. I don't get to be there. I have to buy it. I have to purchase it. So it isn't really mine if I can't have it. And I don't want to get too far away. I had my second point. I almost forgot to say it. Um, so like in our indigenous community, we have a lot of things going around about not talking about politics not talking about you know policy but that's what I want from our indigenous community as we need to educate ourselves in politics and policy because we need to implement the change that we want to see we need to stop accepting breadcrumbs we need to have you know action we really need action and we cannot accept any less we should not count you know a promise as a success once it's done, we can call that an, a success. But politicians don't follow through on their promises. We have to see it happen before we say we did it. Excellent point. Um, getting close to the end of the questions here. So the next second, second to the last question is, for people who are going to be attending the, the march and the rally, if there are one, two, three things that you hope that they leave with what 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 kind of things would you like them to leave with like thoughts or uh, next steps or whatever for people who attend the, the rally yeah again it's kind of like a two-part thing like what I want from our indigenous community and what I want from dominant society and from dominant society I want you to see that the genocide hasn't stopped it's still happening you know, if 85% of uh, indigenous people experience violence in their lifetimes, it's probably going to happen. It means it's likely to happen. You know, if, uh, the weatherman says it's an 85% chance it's going to rain, you don't go to that event. Well, it's an 85% ch chance that there's going to have violence happen to us, 
And so that means it's going to happen. It means it's happening right now while we're talking about it. And so I want people from dominant society to know that the genocide isn't over. It's still happening. And, you know, from our indigenous people, uh, talking about, you know, standing firm, sticking with it, not accepting any less than what we deserve, you know, to have our land back, you know, to have our cases prosecuted. We only get to, you know, just now you can prosecute against dating violence and uh, sexual assault. Well, that doesn't cover murder. That doesn't cover... It doesn't cover other violences. You can only, you know, prosecute so far. And we should have the power, if you commit a crime on our reservation, we should be able to, pr to prosecute you for whatever crime it is. Okay. And so, not accepting, you know, any less than everything. Okay. Last question. Um, this is a little bit more personal. Uh, so, as somebody who has sort of stepped up, and has taken the lead in organizing this march and rally. Um, uh, why is this particular issue uh, so important to you personally? Yeah, um, as an indigenous person, you know, all of these things are going to affect me and my lifetime. I have, you know, three other siblings, so that makes us four. And when I know, uh, you know, when I see my friends out and things like that, you know, eventually we make up that five. And so then, you know, one out of those five are going, one of us, it's going to happen to one of us, mm -hmm. you know? It's so, there is so much violence, so much crime against indigenous people, it's going to happen to our family at some point, you know? The odds just are against us. So it, you know, affects are is going to and has affected our family in different ways you know being indigenous people out in dominant society and you know walking in both worlds of being an indigenous person and following our culture and then having to live and work in dominant society okay well i appreciate you taking the time to speak with us jade and um for your inspiring words and your commitment to fighting for your community Thank you for having me speak.